the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? I, I feel like I feel like we get into well-meaning people get into religious ruts, religious ruts where we don't we, we forget to think about, to dwell on, to meditate, to discover how the kingdom of God actually works. And this hits one of them right square in the head. Who is Jesus? This is yeah. This isn't a trick question. You, you're looking at me like you don't know. <laughs> There'll be no trick questions today, all right? I'm going to be nice all day long. <laughs> Who is Jesus? He's God. What do we call conversation with God? Prayer. So the d disciples pray. Jesus gets up. He answers their prayer and then turns to them and says, why don't you have any faith? Now, I grew up thinking the answers to prayer were the evidences of faith. Now, I wouldn't want to say answers to prayer are not valuable, but the kingdom awareness, the kingdom mind, the renewed mind lives with an awareness that sometimes God wants to do something through you and not for you. The renewed mind lives with an awareness that sometimes God wants to do something through you and not for you. This is the renewed mind. What did Jesus do in this situation? Well, first of all, he slept during a storm. I hope you don't get tired of the statement, but we've said it countless times through the years. You only have authority over the storm you can sleep in. In other words, the place where you have peace is where you have authority to bring peace. What did Jesus do in this situation? says he rebuked the wind and the waves and he spoke or released peace over the storm and the chaos outside of him had to submit to the peace that was inside of him. So his internal reality became his external reality. The world that was in him, remember Jesus taught this, the kingdom is within you. Which to me means all kingdom issues are heart issues. And when heart issues are dealt with, the world around you has to yield itself to your personal internal victory. So, what, what do we have in this story? We have number one, the renewed mind lives with an awareness that sometimes God wants to do something through you and not for you. The renewed mind lives with an awareness that your internal victories become your external victories. We put it a different way. The world around you, when you know what you're doing, when you know how to utilize the tools that God gives you, the world around you starts to take the shape of the world that is in you. Now, you and I know this instinctively, whether you've thought through it or not, is another matter. But we know this instinctively. We've had people, maybe we've walked into a room, we felt incredible tension in a room, or maybe fear. Maybe we've talked to a friend and they're smiling on the outside, everything looks fine on the outside, but we can feel the fear or the hatred or the bitterness or whatever it is that's going on inside of them. You can feel it because they're leaking. That internal reality is starting to shape, and how many of you have seen this before? Somebody becomes hostile and bitter, and they may not say it, but they walk into a room and people around them start getting hostile and irritated and angry. Why? Because that thing that is in them is starting to define the world around them. Now what the Lord has done is he has instructed us, deal with what's going on on the inside. Why? It will position you to redefine the nature of the world around you. All right? One last point on this before we move on is notice that Jesus rebuked the storm. The very fact that he rebuked the storm, to me, implies there was a demonic force in the storm. 
the church frequently gives God credit for disaster, saying, well, that was the hand of God bringing judgment or discipline or whatever to people. No, Jesus rebuked it because there was a power in the storm that was not of God. So the renewed mind then looks at obstacles not believing it's the hand of the Lord. Here's the problem. When you see disaster, calamity, crisis started by God, when you believe that in your, in your heart of hearts, when you think that way, then you lose your ability to discern what is actually demonic and what is actually from the Lord because you've put the devil's work into the category of God's work. And you, you, you deaden your capacity to recognize what is actually sent from the Lord.